On March 6, 2016, this is Social Lesson number 19, Day 1, Part 1, for Hand Evaluation. Greenbridge friends, Michael here at Bridge Hands on Advancing Bridge Lesson number 1 of 6. And we'll be talking about high card points, losing trick count, and cover cards. What's that all about? Well, we start up the pyramid down at the very bottom with high card points. We start taking a look at distribution shape, our partnership fit, and then we use bidding and communications to go ahead and progress towards a game or maybe a slam. But better yet, we're going to take a look at using losing trick count and cover cards. So let's go ahead and proceed. So first off, on the introduction, we're on this first episode, we're going to be talking about these factors, high card points, losing trick count, and cover cards. Next lesson is going to be listening to the auction when the bidding goes with both two people or maybe three or four people being aware not just of our cards but what's going on with the overall auction with maybe two three or four people involved okay then we're going to take a look at the inferences we have a lot of inferences from the leads that we can make and that's very important also to have a good handle on that then we'll go into preempts you know a lot of times preempts are made well and sometimes they're not made so well at all with the wrong types of cards wrong type of shape wrong seat, wrong vulnerability, and so on. So we'd like to do them well for both fun and profit. Obviously, we want it to boomerang for ourselves and not come back and hit us. And overcalls and doubles. Once we start getting into competitive auction, a little jujitsu where it goes back and forth, how do we handle those types of things? And in our sixth lesson in the series, we'll go into the street smart bridge player. Yes, and that is taking a look at a lot of other things that go around at the table, the environmental factors, our behavior patterns, and a lot more. Okay, well, let's start off by taking a look at the format for this class. You can get these lessons at www.bridgehands.com slash videos. It's a nice, easy place, or just even video at the end of it there. And take a look at the lessons um, of both this series as well as Oh, hundreds of hours of our previous lessons. Uh, we log in using our username and password, and the class format here is going to be starting off with slides, as we're doing here. We'll have our learning and a discussion series about the slides. Then we'll go ahead and start taking a look at some hands, bidding and play, and of course, having some review, critique, and reinforcement. And if you wish, you can go ahead on our blog and have comments and feedback. So, okay, let's go ahead and start taking a look at a quiz uh, to see where we're at on our basic knowledge. Now, this assumes that we already have some feel about bridge, but if not, well, you'll still have some fun with it. So we have about 14 different questions, and here we go. Number one, the bridge objective is to take as many what as possible. Yes, bridge is a tricky game, and we want to take tricks, don't we? So that's our main objective, is to take tricks in the game. And we highlight this because so often we get kind of tied up on some of the numeric analytical parts of it, and we forget about tricks. And that's where we go beyond the most basic form of hand evaluation into some more advanced, which is the purpose of the lesson today. So initially we use hand evaluation using what? High card points, right? High card points. That is where we're taking a look at the ace, worth four. The king, three. Queen, two. And jack, maybe one. We'll get into that a little bit more in just a moment. But yes, that's how we start off our hand evaluation. I think it was Milton Work back in maybe the 1920s came up with the idea. And then certainly Charles Gorn and others have refined that. All right. So let's take a look at a second method of evaluation. What are some of the factors to make extra tricks besides the beloved high card points? Hmm. You know what that might be? Well, it would be length for the declare, shortness for the dummy. We'll talk about our partner, the responder, a little bit later. Anyway, the distribution or the shape of the hand. Yes. So we make extra tricks through what are the three types of techniques that we use as declare to make extra tricks? Hmm. Well, one is promote, to promotion. Yes, where we have a long suit, typically five cards or more. Next is we can do some roughing. Typically in the dummy, where there is trump, we're in a trump suit, obviously, and we get a chance to trump some of the losers in our side suit. And the last one is finessing. 
Yes, where we go to a broken sequence and we hope that the left-hand opponent has that missing card that we're gapping and that we can finesse from our left-hand opponent and make one of ours possible winners into a sure winner. Okay, so for that promotion, roughing and finessing, which would you say is the most likely, the highest? Yes, it is to promote is the highest percent and the lowest percentage would be finessing. What's the chance to make a finesse? Hmm, have we thought about that? Well, it would be 50%, right? Yes, 50% chance if you've got like say an ace and a queen in one hand and maybe oh a couple little in the other and we want to finesse it you'll hope that the king is over here and not that it is over on this side so you have a 50 percent chance for the basic finesse don't you and what else do we have well let's take a look in bridge we get bonus points for making a bonus points bonus points well, for making a game, or better yet, making a slam. But those don't happen, but maybe about one in every 20 hands or so. But we hope that about every three or four hands that we're going to have a chance to make a game. In fact, it's even more, and we consider the opponents. They might make a game, right? So we want to bid our games and get our game bonuses. That's a big part of the game. Okay, opener then evaluates extra points with what number of cards in a suit hmm. with how many honors hoping the suit is huh opener evaluates extra points with how many cards do you think are needed in a suit when you're in an opener position how many would you like to have on an average day and how many honors if we're going to try to promote it hoping the suit is whoop I gave away the answer didn't I promotable we would like five or more in our hand, not the combined. For so far, we're just talking about our hand. So we would like to have it where we have five in the suit or more, five plus, right? Okay, and that normally we're talking about, well, we'll get in a second, I'll get ahead of myself with how many honors would you like to have in the suit? Well, we would like to have a couple, wouldn't we? Maybe something like an ace queen three times other, five altogether. Ace King, that would be even better, wouldn't it? Or maybe, how about Ace Jack 10? Okay. Yeah, something like that. Ace Queen 10, maybe even would work. Chance for repeated finesses either way. So those are some applications where we would like to do a promotion play, right? Okay, so other than that, we can responder now this is the opener right who oftentimes is the declarer not necessarily but the responder then with a trump pit with the opener counts extra points for what would that be since partner makes extra tricks losers and responders dummy hand well extra points for shortness right for roughing and so that is the philosophy the strategy the tactic that we want to do is responder you might be able to do a promotion play certainly in the responder hand we said that we do that more often than some of our other tactics such as the finesse and roughing we have some okay let's take a look and see where else we've got alternatively promoting a suit in the dummy requires Promoting a suit, not roughing it now, not f necessarily f finessing all on its own. It requires an entry, maybe a, more than one entry, in fact. And that means we have to have transportation some way to get to our partner's hand. So let's take a look at an example of that. Well, we saw it before. Let's say the dummy is there and the dummy is down. So we'll go ahead and put them from top to down. If we've got ace, king, queen, and two others... That's a pretty nice suit in the dummy, isn't it? So we can go up to the dummy hand, provided we have an entry, right? We have to have at least a singleton there. Um, if we have three of them, that's even better. We might make five tricks. If we have five in the dummy and we have three in our hand, five plus three equals eight. Eight from 
14 equals 5. The most likely split they're going to have is 3 and 2. So yeah, if we play the ace, king, queen, the person with 3, they've got no more, and we make, it turns out, 5 tricks. Okay? Good. Well, so that's what we want is distribution and also have transportation. Initially, bidding, what we try to do, we first look for a combined how many card fit between our hand and our partners. I kind of gave you a tip on that one. And in a what type of a suit? Hmm. Otherwise, if we have a balance, we bid something else. Lastly, we bid or rebid what type of a suit there? Well, okay, let's take a look at it. Initially, uh, we're promoting a suit, and the dummy requires, we got that part, Andrew's transportation. Initially, then bidding, we first look for a combined, how much do you want the combination to be? How many cards? Got an answer? How about eight or more? Yeah, we'd like to have an eight card suit, wouldn't we? And We'd like it to be in the majors, wouldn't we? We get more points. We get 30 points for every trick in the majors. And by the way, it only takes how many to make a game? We got six plus four, our book plus another four more, right? That's 10 tricks. We can make our game in a major. Okay, so if we're not able to play in a major, the golden fit, as we like to sometimes call it, then we would like to then probably play in no trump. We get 40 points for our first trick, even more than in a suit contract. A little harder to make them, though. And then 30 points for every one thereafter, same as we do in the major suits. And if we can't play in no trump, we don't have a balanced hand. We've got like a lopsided hand with all the minors. Well, yeah, if worse comes to worse, 20 points per trick to make a game, it requires the five level, five clubs or five diamonds, and we have to have six points for our tricks. That's 11 tricks. Yeah, that's um, a lot of tricks we have to make. So we don't want to do that if we don't have to. So majors, no trump, and then minors. Okay, opening in a major then, the suit should be how many cards or more if we're opening, not the total, between the two hands, with a balanced 15 to 17 points. Instead, we would open something else. Lastly, we open in a whatever suit where we go well we'd want to have five or more wouldn't we to do it in a major suit okay five plus with a balance 15 to 17 we open yes one no trump and lastly we open in the ug the minor i won't even put it in the upper case a minor suit we don't really want to because we only get 20 points per trick and it takes so many for making a game okay well how about what else we've got here? Opening in a minor suit then requires, now this is opener. How many cards are in a minor suit? It doesn't say we're gonna play in it, just says we're gonna open. How many cards do you have to have in a minor suit? And while the responder can bid a major suit with how many cards? Now we said we have to open with five, right? But when we're a responder, does it still require five or more? Okay. It's three for the minor suit. And if our partner opens in a minor, might have three, four, five, we don't know. We can respond with four versus up here, it was five. So that's one of the things that's different about the standard American system, open with a five card major. But if our partner bids in a minor to open, we only require a four card suit, right? Right. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look and see where else we can go with our questions. Next, total points to make a major suit game. How many points is that? This would be high card points and distribution total points. Total to make three no trump game is how many points there? And the points for a minor suit game. You got it? Okay, 25, 25, and 29. So, to make four hearts or four spades, 25 points. Three no trump, 25 points. A minor suit game, 29 for five clubs or five diamonds. What's that all about? 
Well, think about it. If you need 25 points here, and you to have make 10 tricks, that's 10 tricks. We said we need 11 tricks here to make a minor suit game. Well, we better have another four points. And that might look like what? An ace, right? <laughs> yes, an ace would do it, wouldn't it? So you want to have another four points, just like if you wanted to make 12 tricks to make your slam. Right, then you need another four. So that's how many points then? 25, 29, another four would be 33, wouldn't it? 33 points. Okay, good enough. And um, let's see what else we have here. Are you more likely to make a slam with 33 high card points? Wow, 33 out of 40 in the deck. Or only eight high card points, but in a single 12 card suit. A single suit with 12 cards, holy smoke, all but one? Which are you most likely to make a slam? Well, let's take a look at that. That might be a little bit tricky. If we have eight high card points in a single 12 card suit, that is an ace, a king, wouldn't have the queen, a jack, and then off it goes, right? I got a lot more. So um, yeah, in that situation, it might look something like this. Here we go. Ace, king, jack, whatever, bum, 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 bum. <laughs> and just leaving out the maybe who knows what, the queen, um, I guess, would do it, right? We'd have all the rest of them. So yeah, if we've got up against us um, a queen singleton, right, because there's only 13 cards in a suit, then once we play our ace, the queen goes away, doesn't it? So we're going to get all 12 tricks, and we're only going to lose one, unless our partner maybe has an ace in that suit. Not necessarily likely, but hey, if you've got seven points, there's 40 in the total deck, and seven, how many does that leave? The result is 33. And if there are three players, three goes into 33, 11. So every one of the players on average is going to have 11. I'm sure they have some big distributions themselves. So yeah, our partner might have an ace in the fourth suit. You never know. How about this other one, though? Why wouldn't we, with 33 points, why wouldn't we be getting that 12-card slam there? Hmm. Why would we not necessarily get it all the time? You have a handle on that one? Let's take a look at it. Suit ace, king, queen, something like this. Another suit, ace, king, third. Another suit, king, queen, jack. And in the last suit, you have two small. Okay, five, three, three, two, that is up to 13. And your partner, in the other hand, has something like um, a queen, jack, four times. Over here, they've got maybe jack four times. And over here, they've got an ace four times. And over here, they got a singleton. Well, that would be pretty good, wouldn't it? Because you only lose one if you are in a suit contract, a no trump contract. That wouldn't be so good at all. But let's say you didn't have quite as many in that suit, and instead you have a doubleton here. You're, let's say you're in your six spade contract. Well, you've got 33 points, but um, you've got a little problem here. Don't you got chink in your armor in the club suit, right? So if you have a side suit with just worthless honors, maybe they're even queens and jacks, sorry about that. So 33 points is not it, and that's why we use the Blackwood Convention to have our aces. So, okay, great. Let's go ahead and take a look and see where we're at. Now then, um, which is more important, primary or secondary honors? Well, first of all, what's a primary honor? Aces and kings are primary honors, and those are quick tricks, and they are more important than Quackers, queens, and jacks, right? Um, why is that? Because aces and kings quickly take tricks, exactly by the way they're named. Which is more important than working or spread honors? Working honors. Do we know what working honors are? Well, they do work. Yes, those are ones that are worked together in a single suit. Spread honors 
an ace, a king, a queen, and a jack. A jack doubleton isn't going to take anything. I don't even really much care for jack three times, as you've heard me say in lessons. I don't think that's worth a point unless our partner bid the suit. You know, it's got the ace, king, queen against you. It's not working at all. A queen doubleton, maybe. Yeah, we'll give it two points. I'm much more happy when we have aces and kings in a suit, especially where they're all working together. The more that are work together, the happier we are. Okay. Number 12. How many points to open with a normal hand? With a normal hand, how many points do you have? High card and distribution points. What do you think? 12 is a good number. Not all 12 points are, hand, are the same. We talked about where we've got something with um, a jack third on a side suit. I don't like to count that one unless my partner's bid the suit. And we're talking about to open. Our partner's not bid yet, so I wouldn't count that for one point. But we talked about where the honors are working. We like that. So on average, 12. We used to use 13. But I think these days, most people, it's a bidder's game. You better get in there before the auction gets taken away from you by the opponents. It might be a good lead direction, even if the opponents get uh, to win the auction. Okay, so 12 high card points, or maybe 12 distribution points. That could be less than 12 high and length. What about when you open with less? What would that look like? When would you open with less, huh? Well, remember we talked before about shape? Sure. So if we have a shapely hand, we could open at the one level. We'll talk more about that in a second. And if we have less, meaning we have a preamp situation, sure. We have a substandard open. We open at the two or maybe three level with a six or seven card suit. And then how many points to open with a five, four, three, one shape? Well, that's a pretty shapely hand, isn't it? Our 13 cards are one. We've got a singleton. Only thing would be more shapely if we had a void somewhere. Would you open with less than 12? Are we seeing 11 high card points with a 5, 4, 3, 1 shape? Yes, we are. You know, if you're used to the old days of opening with 13 or more points, including distribution, we're saying going to 12, and now you're saying, whoa, well, wait a second. 11, uh, I don't know about that. Well, um, bear with us a little bit. Let's take a look at the shape. Now, it could be a 5, 4, 3, 1, or maybe a 5, 5, 2, 1, or a 5, 5, 3, 0, or how about a 6, 3, 3, 1, something like that. But where you have a singleton or less, a void, or maybe um, a two-card suit along with a singleton, then yes, this is going to be a more shapely hand. So 11 high card points could do it. So um, let's go ahead and make sure these are working honors. Let's go with that old ace, queen five times. Fine, could be ace, jack, 10, maybe even ace, jack, five times, whatever. But be nice if we had two honors. Remember, working honors? Okay. And then how about uh, you want to do a king, queen maybe here? Four times. What's that? Six and five is 11. That does it right there, doesn't it? So a triple 10. Nothing and a singleton would do it because these suits have a good chance. And by the way, they are the major suits, aren't they? It doesn't have to be major suits. It could be something like five clubs. Let's go with a king, queen, five times there. And in the diamonds, oh goodness, ace, four times. Okay, we're not going to give so many this time. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and we need 11. So let's go queen doubleton. No, I don't really like this that much, but hey, whatever. So we've got a triple, excuse me, five, four, three, one. Um, yeah, I would still do it. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I would count that for my rule of five, four, three, one and 11 high card points or more. A good chance to promote that is basic course. Now it's much harder, obviously, when you've got a club and a diamond with a club being the longer, you'd much rather have it to where it's the majors, a heart or spades, but you can't always get what you want. Okay, well, let's take a look at some more. And next up comes the rule of 15. What is that and when and why do we use it? Hmm, oh, by the way, it's also called the uh, casino points. That's C-A-S-S-I-N-O, or Pearson points. Hey, it must be pretty good when three different sources want to take credit for it, don't you think? At any rate, um, this is where we count 
the high card points. Okay, start off with the high card points again. And then the number of, whoa, spades? Huh, how about that? And we use it when we're in the fourth seat, and some people like to use it in the third seat as well. Okay, well, what's that all about? Well, uh, let's say that um, here's our table, and there's a pass down in south, a pass in west, a pass in north, and we over here in the east, we happen to have ace, how about ten, five times. Not much there for honor, sorry, is it? Ace and out, almost. And over in the diamond suit, um, we've got queen three times. Um, in the heart suit, how about just a doubleton? Okay. Then we got another tripleton coming, and we've got six points so far. Let's go with our king, queen, little. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And how long is the suit? Five in the spade suit, eleven plus. 5, 16. Well, we definitely have enough points to open it. Um, how about, though, we make it 15 is all we've got in terms of our high card points. Okay, where do we want to give one up? Um, I don't like the idea of a jack. <laughs> you know, I don't think that's worth anything. But let's put a jack over here in this suit, if you'll let me do that. So um, these are working honors, right? I think so. So we've got 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And that gives us a 15, doesn't it? So, okay, that would be enough to do it. Rule of 15. And why is that? Because we have the master suit. The master suit being the spade suit. Yes, no, Trump is higher, but that's not a suit. It's a denomination. But um, what we're interested in is when we're in that fourth seat, is not just passing out. Remember, when we bid one spade, the plot thickens. Let's take a look at the table again. Pass. 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 And we've got, let's say, 11 points with four spades. 11 four is 15. We'll open one spade. Hmm, now what? Well, maybe they've got five clubs and 10 or 11 points. They want to go two clubs, tentatively, and partner. What's our partner going to do? Well, let's take a look. We have five spades. There are 13. That leaves eight. Partner's got two and two-thirds. I think it rounds up to three. Oftentimes can have three or four. So it's probably going to go two spades. And um, at this point, uh, now it's up to the north hand. What do you think? You think they should maybe go to the three level? as both past hands? I don't think so. I think they should probably pass, shouldn't they? And if they do pass, is um, we can pass here. Partner did a sign-off bid. We just had a rule of 15, so we pass. This person going to go three? I don't think so. So if we can make a part score, that's a good thing, because even if it's in a rubber bridge game, it's going to propel us towards our game. In a um, duplicate match point game, hey, Better than having a pass out, isn't it? Two spades equals two. That is equal to 110 points. Not bad. And if the other tables, it's um, a pass out for a zero. You get the nice star there for that. Got the idea? Okay, let's try another. Okay, anything else that we can think of to make some bids to squeeze one in? Oh, yeah, sure. We talked about a 5-4-3 one. How about a 5-5-2 five, five, one? Well, certainly that's more shapely, isn't it? And if we have working honors, how many points do we need to open there? 10. Okay, that is the rule of 20. So on our 20th question, we are using the rule of 20. So if we happen to have, oh, let's see what we can come up with a hand here. Well, okay, an example of a rule of 20 would be, let's try a jack five times and our spade suit and our hard suit well let's give a singleton and in our diamond suit let's give a doubleton so we've got another five cards and let's go ahead and make it a ace now maybe not an ace you want to try something else okay let's maybe go with a king queen king 
queen five times. So that means we have five high card points here and five high card points there. That's halfway there. And um, five card suit, five card suit. So five and five is another 10. So we've got 10 and 10 equals 20. Yes, we could go ahead and open that in our higher ranking suit when there's two five cards. Well, I'll start with the higher. We would open it one spade, even though we've only got an ace, a king, a queen, and a jack. But they are working, aren't they? You wouldn't want them to be. I see some people make the fatal mistake in saying, well, you know, I've got a queen five times. And over here in the diamond suit, let's go ahead and get rid of one of those and put the king over there. Not so good. <laughs> this suit is not going to promote that easy. Remember, promotion is the name of the game? Yeah, that's not so good. So you want your honors to be what? Working, right, working honors. And it might be something different. Maybe it's got a 6-5. Let's go a, oh, maybe an out. Three, four, five, six. And um, okay, so over here we've got a ace and um, a jack four times. And that's what six, four is ten, and a triple ten and a, a void in the last suit. So that's nine is all it is in our high card points. And how many in length? Six plus four is ten. Hmm. Doesn't quite make it, does it? But how about if it was a fifth one here? And we'll go ahead and take away one down here. Now it starts to look a little bit better, doesn't it? Because even though we've got our nine, now we've got a eleven, don't we? Oh yeah. Yes, we do. So now we've got eleven. 6 and 5, 6, 5, 2, 0, and we still have our rule of 20. So even though the hand got a little bit worse here, uh, we're ace and out six times, yeah, we could still go ahead and open one spade. With nine high card points? Yeah, sure. Yeah, if our partner can support either of these suits, the majors, it doesn't take that many to make a game, does it? Because we're not going to lose anything in clubs, that's for sure. And we have two losers there. So, uh, yeah, if we can get a couple nice honors there, only maybe need about 10, 11 points from our partner to make our game. Okay, hopefully most of this has been a review for you and you're ready to go onward and upward. So what goes beyond high card points, length and distribution points? Enter the world of losing trick count, LTC, and that is a better way for opener to count extra tricks when the partnership has a good trump fit. Well, not always. There is something we'll take a look at. Semi and fully self-sustained suit. When you have such a good suit on your own, you don't need to fit with partner. But we normally, as you know, we would like to have a 5-3 fit, wouldn't we? Oh, sure. If partner can have a 5 and a 4, that's going to take an extra trick right there, isn't it? But at any rate, when we have a good partnership fit, we'll be able to start using this thing we refer to as losing trick count. But that makes it tough for the responder because they have so doggone many losers. So what are we going to have in store for them? Well, yeah, there's something for them too, and that is cover cards. Yes, if they have primary honors. What were the primary honors? You remember those? That was the aces and the kings. Is there anything else where we could take extra tricks? Well, remember we talked about roughs, didn't we? And that would be a single 10 in a suit or maybe a double 10 in a suit where if our partner's got maybe three or four cards in a suit and we've got a single 10. Yeah, it's rough city. So besides promotion, we have the roughs going for us there too. And what about if the honors are working? Hmm, working honors. Yeah, we have a chance to do some finesses, don't we? So that's part of the name of the game also. And we'll get into that and more coming up in part two. 
And then in part three, of course, we're going to want to head for the table and start playing some of these cards, aren't we? Yes, play it again, Sam. Well, okay, Bridge friends, I hope you enjoyed the show so far, and we look forward to part two and part three. Part two, into losing trick count. Part three, time to head for the table and start playing some of these fun hands, isn't it? So, you know what to do next. Come on over to www.bridgehands.com and log in. Go ahead and start watching part two and part three on with the show. If you are already a member, use your existing login ID and password. If you uh, don't have a membership, what are you waiting for? Come on down and get a free membership. Take a look and get a peek at some of our losing trick count hand and get some tips, tricks, and traps on what to do, what not to do there. And if you are a premium or ultra member, yes, you get to enjoy the whole show as well as hundreds of hours of our other lessons we have on stock. But wait, there's more. This is just Advancing Bridge Part 1, part of a six lesson series. So stay tuned. We'll see you on the flip side and have a great day playing bridge. Bye for now.